another Retro Junkie.net exclusive. Today we'll be doing a video on Sega Saturn Model 1 VA0. This is the very first of the Saturns um, in the PAL region and we have a mod chip for it as you can see there purchased from uh, Rob at Oh, wait, it says it on the mod chip somewhere. Hang on. Uh, console goods in the good old United Kingdom. So if you need a mod chip for a Saturn, he is your man to go to. Uh, he also provided two ribbon cables. So we'll be uh, establishing which ones we need. This mod chip appears to be a, a dual type. It supports both 21 and 20 pin. Let's have a look at the mod chip itself. As you can see, there are four connectors there. Top ones are 21 pin, bottom ones are 20 pin. And uh, that's the mod chip itself. There is a 5 volt connector at the top right hand corner. And there's the good old 0014s and the 0019s. So, let's first step is really to get the satin apart and uh, we will have a quick look inside at a VA0 Saturn. Remove external screws from the base. So once you've gotten your five screws out from the base, uh, you simply lift and there's the magic in there. Uh, let's turn this around. Really wish I had my tripod. And there's the VA0. As you can see, the power supply, things are different. Power supply is attached to the lid of the unit rather than sitting in here nicely. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the main difference. And there's all these things on here instead of being, being inside here. Now, there's the CD deck itself. So... Next step is to uh, get the mod chip ready for installation. So you'll need to find yourself a piece of wire. I've got this uh, piece of wire here. And uh, with the Model 1 VA0s, you don't need to worry about the uh, soldering the 0014 or 0019 pins at all. Apparently. So that is good news. Nice and easy. So next step is... Soldering. Hesitation will result in lost lives. Okay, so now the mod chip has the uh, 5 volt top corner soldered to a piece of wire. Now that's the rough location of where I'm going to put the mod chip. So it gives you an idea of how long the cable needs to be. It needs to run from over here to over here where the power supply is. And we're just going to tap into one of those uh, 5 volt, or the 5, five the bit the only 5 volt line that's there. So we'll do that and then next step will be yeah, soldering that in but we're also going to want to insulate the back of this board so it doesn't short out on the uh, EMI shielding there. So you can use a piece of cardboard um, I'm going to use uh, captain tape which is uh, insulating highly heat resistant tape. Uh, it's, it's good tape to have. It's yellow in color so it looks cool too. Uh, hang tight and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Nay! Gone ahead and made it even better. I've used captain tape and cardboard. Uh, the main reason was the the legs on these microchips are a lot pointier than the uh, other mod chip I've done in my uh, version 2 satin. Uh, revision 2 satin. Model 2 satin. There you go. Got it right. So, yeah, I didn't want the pins piercing through the captain tape, which as you can see is just like normal sticky tape. And just shorting out on the EMI. So a bit of cardboard under there, just give it a bit of a wrap. And uh, it'll be right as rain. So we're using the two white connectors, not the two black ones. So just tape over those. And uh, now we'll get it hooked into power. Hmm. Hmm. What a mess that turned out to be. So there's the mod chip sitting in as it is going to because uh, the connectors on the plugs are oriented 
back to front. If that were the other way around, I could have had it lying nice and flat and beautiful and just sitting there, but no, I have to sort of squash it in like that with the lid on top. Never mind, it's all wired in. Just make sure your pins are facing the right way. Uh, my 5 volt has gone, choo -choo -choo, made it nice and long, and to the second pin from the left. And that is the 5 volt rail. To confirm that, you can undo the screw there and the two screws at the back of the power supply. Uh, you can lift it out. Be very careful not to touch any of these connectors because there are a fair few capacitors on the power supply, surprisingly, and if you touch them, there's a chance that they are holding a charge just waiting to, you know, zap it out into your hand. So don't touch that, if you can. Uh, but on the other side, on that connector, uh, it actually says the voltages. So there's uh, yeah, 5, 9, 2 grounds, and... Uh, 3.3, I think. I uh, can't remember. Anyway, that's the pin you want, second pin. So once you've done that, you're pretty much good to put it back back in one piece just to give it a quick test and see how you end up. With a bit of luck, you'll now be able to read all those backup discs you have so you don't damage your precious collection of Saturn games. Let's give it a test. Don't forget to check your uh, cable routing as well. All right, so here we are with the Saturn end result. Uh, we've got Radiant, no, Radiant Silver Gun in there. Uh, burnt on a Taiyo Yudin disc. My bad. No date time battery in this one. Looking good. Uh, this version of Radiant Silver Gun I did patch to run on PAL. European region locked. Saturns. Uh, mine doesn't have a mod chip for the region, or rather a cartridge, either way. But it's definitely not a Japanese Saturn. So when, when you do get it up and running, make sure you check uh, CDs, uh, like mute audio CDs. Um, audio CDs, burnt CDs, uh, genuine games, just make sure everything works. Otherwise there might be something wrong. I cannot play this one-handed. Damn. I'll just give another quick demo with, uh, let's go with Guardian Heroes, I think it is. Yep, Guardian Heroes. Looking good.
I have no idea how long this intro goes for. Perfect. So that's how you go ahead and mod using a mod chip. Uh, I think this one's called a version 3 universal mod chip. Uh, there are some other different types out there, but uh, that's just one that I happen to have. So I uh, thought I'd make a video. Thanks for watching. RetroJunkie.net for more. If you have any questions, uh, just drop them in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you in good time. Thanks for watching. RetroJunkie.net